I expected sorrow and despair, but the situation here goes beyond even my prophetic inklings. On the surface, yes, but peace through tyranny provides false harmony. Euraxia uses fear and threats of violence to keep the Khajiit in line, making them second-class citizens in their own province. It appalls me to think Euraxia and I are related. It would be better if I showed you. Follow me and I'll demonstrate the true depths of my half-sister's villainy. Her grip on Rimmon is far tighter than it appears. Very well. But what I'm about to show you isn't for the faint of heart. Follow me. Have you ever visited a Rimmon workhouse? They treat the Khajiiti workers worse than slaves. One of my friends told me that the monks slaves. at Two Moons are no longer chasing invisible butterflies. What a relief! I was worried. That is good news indeed. But do we know what happened there? It's that of building course, over there. I asked, you know, For most of Rimmon's Khajiit, it's the only job available to them. The workhouse serves to snare the poor and the destitute, those who fall behind on their debts. They come here to find employment and earn a decent wage, but the costs deducted to pay for room and board leave them worse off than they were before. One of the first things Euraxia did after declaring herself queen was to institute tariffs and fines that apply only to Khajiiti citizens. No one else needs the workhouse. A cruel tactic, but effective. The Rimin Khajiit? No. Any complaints incur fines for causing a public disturbance or some other inane ordinance. No one wants to risk falling even further into debt. It's ingenious. Monstrous, but ingenious. Oh, Euraxia is clever. She pays the Khajiiti, and the workhouse isn't technically a prison. On the surface, it appears to be a place that helps society's unfortunates, but underneath, it's slavery without any of the uncomfortable trappings. Now, let's visit the Rimmon marketplace. Take a look around. Business seems to be thriving, but appearances can be deceiving. It may be hard to see, but the Khajiiti merchants struggle to keep their stalls open while the less bestial business people rake in the profits. Euraxia would have you believe it's a matter of work ethic, but we know better. Unfairly doesn't begin to cover it. Khajiiti merchants must deal with high tariffs, extra inspection fees, costly licenses. Euraxia is squeezing them for every piece of gold imaginable. She even instituted a fur tax. On the surface, it seems reasonable to make Khajiiti pay for extra inspections to ensure their fur isn't getting into the products they sell. And while they do shed, it's just another way to discriminate against the rightful citizens of this land. Come along. I want to show you the improvements Euraxia made to the palace walls. See the trebuchets? Notice how they're aimed into the city below. See how the siege weapons sit upon the walls? When it comes right down to it, you're looking at the secret of my half-sister's success. How else do you think Euraxia maintains order and keeps the elsewhere defense force at bay? She declared publicly and has repeated often that any attempt to liberate Rimmon will see her unleash the full fury of the siege weapons upon the city. If Euraxia can't have Rimmon, then neither can anyone else. 
She'd destroy the city in a heartbeat if she thought she was in danger of losing control. Of course, she tells her non-bestial subjects that only the Khajiiti districts are targeted. Absolutely not. But the lie makes her supporters feel better. The Khajiit know that even a peaceful protest could result in the destruction of Rimen. So far, no one has dared to challenge Euraxia's will in this matter, and for good reason. When we get to the palace, let me do the talking. As the Elder Tharn, I'll demonstrate my dominance over Euraxia and negotiate a cessation of the... Ah, here come Queen Euraxia's guests now. I don't like the looks of these meddlers. I say we feed them to the dragons and be done with it. So you're Abner Tharn's bodyguard and valet. Not what I expected. I assume you want to follow your master into the Queen's inner sanctum, huh? I'll allow it. But first, I want to gauge the measure of your marrow. I am Queen Euraxia's chief necromancer. You may call me Zumog Foom. The other grave callers answer to me. And this is my familiar and confidant, Sir Cadwell the Betrayer. Ah, yes. The betrayer saw you when it looked through the soul shriven's eyes. The creature you know is a pale shadow of the dark knight that once walked these lands. I exhumed his remains and reanimated him. Well, his head, it was all I could find. My actions don't concern you. I just wanted to meet Abner Tharn's lackey and determine if Queen Euraxia had anything to fear. The answer is quite clear. Your insignificance rivals that of the soul-shriven fool, which makes you eminently forgettable. Now about the rest of my body, oh pestilent one. Your insults won't hasten the process, betrayer. But there's a terrible draft in what used to be my nether regions. If Queen Euraxia has you beheaded, do you mind if I lay claim to your body? It's not quite up to my usual standards, but any dagger in the spleen, wouldn't you agree? I am my own head, yes. 
I am the hero of Sirod and the villain of Elsewhere, the champion of the third Nedic massacre and the dark knight they call the Betrayer. Of course not, I am the genuine article, much more real than a disembodied soul given shape in the flesh cauldrons of oblivion. But why do you presume to talk to me? I have killed greater beings than you for much, much less. Came to that conclusion by yourself, did you? <laughs> That's what they called me. It has a certain ring to it, but I always preferred my more grandiose titles. Champion, Slayer, Dark Knight. When I made whole, the cats will pay for what they did to me. Presenting Abner Thorn, Grand Chancellor and Overlord of Nibine, Imperial Battle Mage of the Elder Council, and Patriarch of the Thorn Dynasty, and his bodyguard. Ah, half brother, your arrival, it's so unexceptional. Pretending to be a queen. Hush, isn't... Abner, you bore me. Bodyguard, you look interesting. Come talk to me. You heard her. Good luck. My sources indicated that my son's murderer was somewhat... taller. Ah, well. Now, why in the world should I even consider negotiating with the monster who murdered my dear Javad? And you killed him for that? By whose authority do you play judge, jury, and executioner? Oh, to think I once dreamed of torturing you for a dozen years, but I see now that you're not worth the effort. So, why come to me about the dragons? You think that your flowery words will cause me to slip and reveal my deepest, darkest plan? Oh, how little you understand the mind of a thorn. Instead... I think I will take you to the dungeons. Make you beg for mercy before I give your remains to Foom. Flowery words won't sway me, sun killer. But you are correct about one thing. Mulomnir and I have a special relationship. An understanding. The dragons will secure my control of elsewhere. With their help, nothing can stop me. Enough! Zumog Foom, what news do you bring? The Desert Wind Adaptorium has fallen. We move against Riverhold on your word. Then the word is given. Now, half-brother. Treachery? How could I ever have anticipated this? Guards, take them to the dungeons! I think not. Well, I suppose that could have gone better. I prepared for Euraxia's probable betrayal. Unfortunately, my teleport spell wasn't quite able to penetrate the palace wards. So we wound up down here, in the palace sewer. We heard two things of note. First, Euraxian forces have invaded the Desert Wind Adeptorium for some insidious purpose. And second, my vile half-sister ordered an attack on Riverhold. One thing at a time, my companion. One thing at a time. I need to recover my strength after teleporting us into this skeever hole. I'll need your help to get out of here. Then we can deal with both Desert Wind and Riverhold. My age is finally catching up with me. 
Thank you so much for poking that open wound. Magic takes a toll on the body. I've been wielding powerful forces since before you were born. There's always a cost. You'd do well to remember that. Eventually. Quicker if you stop badgering me about it. My strength will return. It always does. Now get us out of this sewer so we can warn both Desert Wind and Riverhold.
The Queen wants them alive. The way out, finally. I can't abide another moment in this stench. Well, that's an experience I won't be adding to my memoirs. We'll separate here. Make it harder for Euraxia's lackeys to follow us. Now, now. Things actually turned out better than I expected. We know that Euraxia wants something from the Desert Wind Adeptorium, and we know she's about to launch a counter-strike against Riverhold. That's not exactly true. If my power wasn't depleted, well, let's not digress. I'll go to Riverhold and warn Garish Ree. We'll make sure the city is ready for the attack. Meanwhile, you find out what's happening at the Desert Wind Adeptorium. Adeptoriums serve the same function as monasteries in other parts of Tamriel. Desert Wind and its adepts are dedicated to the Jean Kaj, literally the Order of the Desert Wind. Note that it has numerous entrances, in case the main door is blocked. I may have some. Shores bones. Rigert knew he should have brought more mead.
Seal the gates. Let no Euraxian enter this holy place.
Invaders! This one will not allow you to enter this holy place. Invaders, this one will not allow you to enter this holy place. <laughs> Invaders, this one will not allow you to enter this holy place. You do not look like one of the Usurper Queen's soldiers. Who are you, and what are you doing down here? The Speaker of the Main sent you? This one expected we were on our own, what with the dragons and the battles to the north. Zamarak came down here to seal this path, but now he thinks the Euraxians seek the Grand Adept. Desert Wind holds many Kajiti secrets, and the keeper of those secrets is the Grand Adept. If you truly want to help, follow Zamarak to the Grand Adept's chambers. Nine winds, no! Get to the door! Go! Save the Grand Adept! Go! This one will find another way inside. You 
far too late. The Grand Adept revealed all before I killed him. None can deny Araxia or her champion. I will wipe out the entire order. Zumog Foom, take my soul! Zumog Foom! This is the necromancer's doing. Even in death, I continue to serve. He called it a blessing. Said it would protect me. Damn him! He claimed my soul! Please, you must help me. Release me from this curse! We came for an ancient secret. Protected by the Grand Adept. She put up a good fight. I'll give her that. Zumog Foom seeks the location of the Betrayer's body parts. I learned where the dismembered corpse was hidden. Now, please, help me! You are wrong. The secret belongs to me. What the Battle Mage knew in life, she whispers to me in death. Soon Riverhold will fall, and the Betrayer will be restored. Let the fourth wind open the way. Grand Adept! No! Zamarak has failed. This one was too slow. Again. What has happened here? Who killed the Grand Adept? Zamarak thanks you for avenging the Grand Adept. But why did they attack this peaceful Adeptorium? Why kill a harmless old student of the Desert Winds? The Usurper Queen made a mistake when she had the Grand Adept killed. Whatever they came to find had an unintended consequence. It has roused the students of the Desert Winds. Zamarak pledges the Adepts to Garashri's cause. Euraxia will fall. We are not many, but we are strong. The Adepts of the Desert Wind will aid the city. Zamarak will see you there after he makes sure the Grand Adept receives the proper blessings.
I could just spit. I informed Garesh Ri and Kamira about what happened in Rimen. They're mobilizing our remaining forces even as we speak. Now tell me, what did you learn at the Desert Wind Adeptorium? I often wondered who Cadwell was before he became a soul shriven. I know the tales of the betrayer, but I never equated the two. The Cadwell we know is so not that. We'll deal with Zumog Foom after we save Riverhold. Anything else to report? Well, that's a bit of welcome news. Many of the adepts have remarkable martial skills that we could surely make use of. Speaking of which, are you ready to help defend the city? For now, recover your strength and prepare yourself. Euraxia's forces will arrive soon and we'll need you ready for the battle to come. And here, take this. Garish Ri keeps handing me pouches, but I have little use for Khajiiti gold. Multiple Cadwells, necromancers, dragons, and now Euraxian soldiers marching on Riverhold. This day just keeps getting better and better. Regardless, there's much to do and not a lot of time to do it. Yes, but Garish Ri's scouts report that they're on their way. Our parley seems to have aroused Euraxia's anger. What remains of Elsewhere's militia has taken up positions around town, but I fear they are too few in number. They need your help. Garish Ri has placed the defense of the city in Kamira's hands. She moves the Desert Wind adepts, every volunteer she could muster, and what remains of the militia like pieces on a game board. Report to her, and she'll give you your orders. Find Chimera outside and see what she requires. Euraxian soldiers will soon reach Riverhold. When that happens, all oblivion will break loose.
I sent Camira out to coordinate the city's defenses while Tharn and I continue to refine our strategy. Can we hold this city, or should we fall back? I hope the battle mage can pull a miracle out of his ear, but we cannot count on that. Camira knows Riverhold and its people well. Her training has prepared her for this. She is more than capable of organizing our defenses and converting our strategies into actionable tactics. She is very good at getting things done. When Euraxia first conquered our home, she occupied the entire upper tier of northern elsewhere, from Riverhold to Rimen. It took many years and much blood to retake the northwest and confine her to Rimen. I have no doubt she will attack. It won't be easy, but our strategy is sound and Kamira excels at executing tactics. Between Captain Nalado's remaining warriors and the Desert Wind adepts you brought, we should have the forces we need, provided Euraxia does not send a dragon. <laughs>